Okay, greetings everyone. Welcome to Gerard Black in the Philippines with the truth. I'm going to welcome you to my channel, all my subscribers, all my triggers, my peaches, my lovers, my haters, my commenters, and scallywags. Each and every one of you, I'm going to welcome you to my channel. Well, it's, it's no secret they're voting today, so uh, me the best person. Man. Me, you know where I stand. I want to see the first woman president of the United States in my lifetime. Okay, and we're gonna leave it at that. You know, being in the Philippines, you know, I have um, I have encountered some strange things. You know, I remember when I moved to Bacon, and I used to ride my bike early in the morning because I used to go play tennis. And what happened was that um, uh, I rode down this dark road. You know. Um, I used to live over by Calvin, you know, I should show you that because, you know, interesting real estate. <laughs> For the life of me, he said, why don't you guys pave these roads? But I understand it. It's like politics, if anything else. You know, it's, it's up to the brown guy and, and I, I guess the, uh, the city of Bacon to pave some of the road, or anywhere to pave the roads. I mean, there's just damn too many rocks <laughs> and, and holes once you get off the main drag. But anyway, you know, I uh, I, I would drive, it would give me about 4.35 in the morning. I used to drive. And this one stretch of road was, uh, you know, and I'm riding my scooter and I hear, I hear, bap, <laughs> and I look, and it was a bat, <laughs> you know, God damn bat hit me in the head. I said, oh man. So so of course I'm, I'm a little a little not not shaking too much, but you know, kinda of, you know, kinda of struck, you know, that uh 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 that a bat would see me as food. <laughs> it was a good thing I was wearing my helmet. And one other time I was riding down there and this is why it's important to keep your mouth closed. And I'm driving and and all of a sudden I feel something hit my lip and I go like this try to pull it. And it was like stuck and I pulled hard and and, and threw it, 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 it was a bug, big ass bug. And uh, I was bleeding <laughs> and the lips and where the claws of this bug had latched on. And then it made me think about, you know, Mother Nature, you know, how um, how it equips, you know, uh, um, creatures, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, to adapt in certain environments. And when there's environment where there's wind and rain or whatever, uh, the insects, I think, or at least this particular breed of insects, had the ability to once it touches something, it clings. You know, you know, like to keep from blowing off or like if you're on a leave or something like this or you're trying to, to grab onto something that, you know, keep from being swept away somehow or another. And that's what it remind me of that, 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 that this bug had just attached to my lip. And I couldn't help but think that if I had my mouth open, it was a big enough bug that could have gone down my throat and potentially blocked my airway. I, I'm not, I, I'm not shitting you. That's how big that that bug was. Because when I pulled off my lip, I pulled off my lip like this. <clears throat> like this. So that was also an experience. But you know, in the Philippines, they have um, a variety uh, of different fruits, you know, uh, uh, that you can eat from. I remember when I was in Cebu, I saw this guy when I was uh, living in a condo. I saw this guy, he pulled up in the scooter because he said, I'm walking Helen this time. She's a puppy. And he's climbing this fence and he climbs over and then he climbs this tree and he starts getting these these branches hey you know these leaves <laughs> i'm thinking what i'm thinking is this something to smoke <laughs> but he's pulling them off and everything and he climbs back over and i couldn't help but stop i said wait wait amigo 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 what is that he said that's i don't know what he said but you eat. I said, oh, you eat it. I said, wow, you got food <laughs> you know, like this. And it turned out to be um, barangay leaves. Barangay leaves are very, 
a popular plant, and it grows it grows really really wild. But um, in some places they don't, and, and but it's a very therapeutic uh, plant, you know, for for the body. You know, it's very healthy. You know, in fact, you know, uh, we feed Dutchess it, you know, m mashed in with other stuff and whatever, you know, because we know how uh, how healthy it is. So uh, the, I just thought that was kind of strange. And they have they have this red fruit that looks like balls, <laughs> testicles, very hairy, very very snubbly hairy, or thing under like this. And but the but the the thing I don't like about them is that they attract ants. And my God, so many ants are in these things. You know, you buy them from the stand or whatever, and just ants, ants, ants. You know, and so whenever they bring them, I tell them, put them in the refrigerator, put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> because I don't want to see a whole trail of ants. You know, you know, joy to me is killing that one ant that's a scout. That one ant whose job is to go out and find food source and come back and tell the rest of the uh, 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 the hive or the rest of the uh, the, uh, the colony uh, that uh, there's food over here. And then now you got a whole trail of ants heading to that food source. So joy to me is killing that scout. <laughs> so when I when I see that one ant just walking around checking things out, oh no, you got to go, Pa, <laughs> because I I know what your job is. Your job is to bring in the troops, and that's not going to happen here. But anyway, so uh, there's another fruit that they have. It's called, uh, let me see if I get this right, kazanya. I, I know it rhymes with lasagna, so it could be kazanya or uh, something like that. And uh, here, I want to show. I wanted. To, I, you know, I wanted to show you it. Mm -hmm. This is the fruit. It's called kazanya, or. <laughs> I'm looking to see if there's any ants. <laughs> no, no. These don't have ants because it's a closed shell, I guess. But um, uh, this is what it looks like. You see? Right, like this. This is another one of strange fruits. But when you, you eat it by opening it up, you actually peel it. You peel it like you would peel an orange. When uh, fruits like this, they bring here, I tell them to put them in the refrigerator because to me, it tastes better chilled. And so I like to have everything, all my fruits that I eat uh, chilled. I remember in was it Vegas, I think it was Vegas, um, I used to get cantaloupes and I used to put them in the freezer. And when they got very, very cold, I mean, very, very hot outside, uh, I would go inside here. You see, that uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, see, kind of see, it has like these, uh, like these little slices, wedges inside of it. And I used to take the cantaloupe and I would cut it in half, put one half back in the refrigerator, in the freezer, and go outside and just put my face in that cantaloupe. And oh my God, oh, oh. the relief that, uh, uh, how to beat the heat. That's how you do it, with the cantaloupe in the face. But these here, here, you peel them like this. Like I said, it's kind of like a, uh, it kind of looks like a, a, a lemon, um, an orange slice like this. Very tasty, very good. Mm. Mm. And they can sit around eat a whole slew of these. Mm. Mm. These called lasagna, something like that. But very, very good. Well, what I want to tell you, you know, I've, I've been talking about this one foreigner for a while. 
and how much trouble he's having with his uh, his money. In fact, right now he has no money, absolutely nothing, nothing. He's married, you know, um, you know. Um, <clears throat> I can understand a Filipina marrying a man with a pension, you know, and 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 thinking that yes, okay, this is it, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying that. This is this is the gold ring. This is the ching ching. <laughs> this, this is a ba pow, you know, and, and and feeling that you that they have that security that their partner has an endless amount of money through um, through pension or whatever what have you. And something something happened along the way. I don't know. Um, uh, they stopped it. And uh, now his card was kind of funny. Uh, the bank institution he, he has, I don't want to, I don't want to name it, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a very shitty bank because um, it wouldn't allow him uh, to withdraw cash from his account. You know, although he's able to, you know, charge things, you know, because he used to come to me. And me and I, and that's where we go shopping and we go buy uh, our food on his card and then we give him the money. And um, minus 500, because I swear that's how the game goes. You know what I'm saying? Fair exchange ain't no robbery. You know, you ought to be glad it's not 50 cents on the dollar. This <laughs> is in New York, <laughs> in the States. Because <laughs> whenever you're dealing with government money or some of that, coupons, or whatever it's, or the cards that they have is always like a 50, uh, uh, 50 cents on a dollar. Uh, very seldom 75, but mostly 50 cents on a dollar. So anyway, 500 was the whole lot to ask when he was able to, you know, pay for his gross, uh, to get cash money. Uh, sometimes um, our grocery would run to like uh, uh, 16,000 or something like that. So that's kind of good money for him. But anyway, you know, well, uh, it, it has stopped. And um, he had went back to to the U.S. to not kind of find out why. I mean, he would come and make calls to his bank, and his bank would tell him that you know this is all you have, you know, you know this, you know what have you, uh, or when his last deposit was, or what have you. And um, he decided to go back to straighten that out. Now, uh, he went back to straighten it out. He has a sister there and what have you. And the thing that happened was that, uh, I, I, I don't know, Social Security or, or whoever, I think it was Social Security, gave him an appointment to for a come in the following day. And uh, uh, he left because his ticket was the flight to go back um, the day before. So rather than making a decision to say, hey, look, I'm going to skip this flight because this appointment is more important to me because this is this is my money flow. This, <laughs> this is all for all the, all the uh, uh, what they call enchiladas. This is for all the enchiladas. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to make this appointment, but, you know, he, he missed it. So as a result, they stopped it. Now, he was under the impression that the reason they stopped it was he was living in the Philippines. And uh, I told him, well, you know, I don't think that's the reason why, you know, because it's not uncommon for you to still have your pension go into um, uh, a banking institution in your country and then transfer money, you know, from one institution to another here in the Philippines. You know. There are some that would have their you know, their pensions, you'll be deposited directly into an account in the Philippines, you know, um, you know, the government check or whatever. You know, I, I wouldn't go that route because <laughs> I, I've heard stories when I was with my Ukrainian girlfriend, she said, she remember the time when they told her that, you know, you know, and they, they used to save money, you know, you know uh, save money, then the government told them, look, all your money is now you know, worthless. You might as well just throw it in a fireplace because they changed the currency and, and devaluated 
the, the currency to nothing, you know. So, you know, just living through those times, you know, or knowing that those times could possibly happen, you can't help but kind of think about that in a foreign country that, you know, that, that for whatever reason what might happen, you know, um, uh, it can all be gone in an instant if you have all your eggs in one basket. So anyway, um, um, uh, he contacted them and he, he thought maybe because they told him that he was living in the Philippines, you know, that that's why, you know, you know, how they know he's living in the Philippines. I'm sure he probably told them, you know, you know, it's not uncommon to say, you know, like, this is where I'm living, you know, this, this is where I'm at now, you know. You know, uh, I, my 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 address with all my government things are with my the family home. So you know that's that's the that's the address on record. You know they, that's the address that you know. Now don't get me wrong, they have sent me mail, uh, the VA or whatever here in the Philippines, but as far as on record, that's my that's my home address. So um um. Uh, he he, contact, he he contacted them while they were in, while they were here, and they've gone to Cebu a couple of times, you know, to kind of to kind of have a face to face, and then I like, told them, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, uh, you know, you have to, you know, they sent a letter and whatever, and they responded back in a letter saying, like, um, because you owe X amount of dollars, um, we're gonna take out fifty dollars a month out of your monthly or ten dollars if it's under so much or what have you until the debt's paid now automatically you would think that you know well sure this is an indication that your checks are still coming so um he contacted the bank and, and found out that the last check that was deposited was back in may of course the letter has come after that you know, he got the letter somewhere like in August or somewhere like this, and, <clears throat> and they told him this. So, of course, you know, you would automatically assume that this is an indication that, yes, although I do owe you money, because they will get their money, uh, that you are still getting a check. Because it, it says that we will take this amount out of your check each month. And uh, come to find out that his checks were not being deposited There's no record in his bank account that checks were deposited, were being deposited. And so he contacted the bank and said, look, look the bank says, I mean, according to this letter, that I should be getting my check. And um, I said, no, I'm sorry. You know, the last you know, deposit was back in, in, in May or something like this. And so ever since then, you know, he has had no money. You know, um, uh I shudder to think how him and his wife are making it, you know, uh, from time to time, you know, we'll have him over and, and I might slip, you know, some pesos in his pocket, you know, you know, just, you know, just to, you know, get over the hump, that hump day. And um, uh, he was over here last weekend and, you know, they didn't know what to do or, you know, what have you. I said, it's easy. Take your ass back to the United States go into those office, have that face-to-face -face appointment, and get your shit straight. And while you're at it, change banking institutions where your check is being deposited. Because where you're having it being deposited at is, is, is you know, it's not like one of these hole-in-the-wall type institutions. And so he's saying, well, you know, I don't, you know, he's got a sister back there. So I, I, I don't know how, how, well, you better find a way, Paul. You know, you would you married, you know, pass the hat and have them all get you an airline ticket and fly your ass back there. I said, if you do it and take care of your business, you could be back home probably by Christmas or the first of the year. And you might find that 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 you have retro track checks from June, July, August, September, October, November. You might have six months of backed up checks waiting for you. Just waiting for them to get get directions on where to send them to. So, you know, uh, uh, he called me uh, yesterday or something, wanted me to check because the first of the month came and wanted me to check and see if it, if it was put in there. You know, reluctantly I did because because I know the answer, you know. 
you know, and they said he has $2 or something in there that's been in there, you know, for the longest time, you know, and um, I said, no, no, no deposit, nothing like this. And so, um, you know, that's where he is right now, you know, and, um, you, know, all, you know, all I can do is just say, hey, man, you know, and, and you know, try to give him a direction and in, 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 in with to rectify his situation. And um, he's, um, you know, um, well, he's he's old and he, uh, you know, and, and that plays a lot of part in his being able to understand. I know you know a lot of old people. What? What? I can't understand. I can't, you know, I mean, my stepfather, Papa Joe, was like that. But anyway, so um, you know, um, I, you know, I wish him luck. You know, to really get that matter taken care of. You know, but sometimes the only solution is to just go back to the States and take care of your business. Go back to the States, take care of your health. You know, it, you know, it, it's, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, too difficult to do. All right, this is John Black in the Philippines with the truth. Remember, dreams are nothing more than plans of waiting action. Never disrespect the elders pull someone up. And sometimes you're the only one to see your vision. And the best we bring your life is to live good. Are you living good today? Are you? <laughs> well, I am too. And if you're lucky enough to have a woman like Ollie Woodson, former lead singer The Temptations, once sung, treat her like a lady. And ladies, if you're lucky enough to have a good man like me, make him feel like a king, and never say no. Okay, you know, um, like I said, um, Q passed away. Quincy, Quincy Jones. So... <sighs> I decided this Sunday on the Sunday morning classics, as time goes by, so does um, music. We're going to dive into some of the hits that Quincy Jones has has uh, uh, produced. Okay. Uh, uh, for instance, real quick, did you know that Heat Wave, who was a multiracial band put together by his brother, who was in a service overseas and uh, it said, always and forever, I live with you, always forever. Oh man, now you gotta watch that video, always and forever. Watch that brother. That brother's awesome. Well, the keyboardist in that group is the one who wrote the song. And he wrote, all heat wave songs. So um, when they came came to the uh, to the states and they finally put their picture on the album, so people knew who they were. Because for a long time they didn't have a photograph on them cover. Because at that time there was some, still a lot of discrimination going on. And um, um, they did something with Quincy Jones. And Quincy Jones liked the writer uh, the writer so much because he had a whole stack of songs that Quincy Jones uh, offered him. A job, you know, a, you know, as a, a writer or whatever for Quincy Jones organization. I don't know the name of his label, and um, uh, he told uh, the leader of <laughs> Heat Wave, he said, "Yeah, he says, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to go with Quincy, but I will tell you what, he said, whatever songs I write, I would first give it to Heat Wave, and if Heat Wave wanted to record it, they could. If not." You know, of course, you know, it's, it's up in the air. And at that time, uh, um, who was it? Quincy Jones was the one who got it. Uh, so that was the deal. So uh, I think the first song that what he, he did and produced for Quincy uh, was, you never guess it. I think it was Michael Jackson, I Want to Rock With You. You see, so that song was first he supposed to go, I want to rock with you. Yeah, that song was first we'll go to Quincy. I mean, go to uh, uh, Heat Wave, but they turned it down and went with that one. Um, it's it's one of those two songs. There was another one, uh, uh, Dance You in the Take. Oh, there's another song that he did. Uh, there was two songs around that time, and um, uh, Heat Wave wrote her, and Quincy produced it. All right, so with that being said, I kind of went over time, but um, uh, go out and make it a good day. And live your best life. I'll talk to you later. Peace.